Today we're gonna to talk about bowstrings. Specifically, we're gonna talk about why we twist our bowstrings, how to recognize when you have too many or too few a twists in your bowstrings, why you might potentially want to add or remove some twists in your bowstrings, and we're gonna dispel a few myths in this video as well. And after the intro, we'll get right into it. So I've had a question or two lately on this channel specifically asking about why we twist bowstrings. And I figured that's actually a really good question because it's not commonly answered and it's definitely not commonly asked, but it is super important to successful archery shooting or at least archery shooting in a manner that uh, your equipment is working for you and not working against you. There is a specific ratio of the amount of twists per length of string and all that stuff that super high level performing archers go for. That is mostly individual, there is a rough rule of thumb, but I'm not gonna get into that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the basics of when there is not enough twists in your string or when there's too many twists in your string, how to recognize those two things, what changing or adding or removing twists in the system does for you, and also things that it doesn't do that many people assume it does. So before we get into what is too many or too few twists and how to recognize that, we'll talk about why it's important to have twists at all in the string itself. So the reason that you would wanna have twists in the string, number one, would be to prevent this from happening. The ability to essentially separate the strands of the string easily because there's no twists in this bowstring at all. However, the brace height, which is the distance from the string to the grip or the string to the burger button hole, the plunger hole, whatever you wanna call it, that is correct in this bow, but there are definitely not enough twists because I can just separate the string strands like this very easily. What this causes is it causes the string to act in a manner that is not consistent every time you shoot it because the string is not round, because there is not any sort of force that is making the string stay round. And it gives the opportunity for the string to actually flatten out. And I'll show you here, if you look and I show you the string and I rotate it, you can see how it's fatter in some places, thinner in others, and it's just not round, it's not consistent. That causes issues in arrow delivery when you let go of the string, it causes string path changes depending on the actual structure of the string, and overall, the bow will sound not very happy at all. It'll be very loud, potentially very rattly, and it will have an erratic movement of the string after you let it go. Making the string round and consistent essentially eliminates all of that stuff. So the reason that you want to have twists at all in the string is essentially to make you more consistent and more accurate because a round object moving through the air moves consistently and after the shot, the vibrational properties makes it a lot more consistent, a lot more comfortable and you'll hit your arm a whole lot less potentially if you have twists in the string. Now I did get a bit ahead of myself there showing you what is too few of twists and we'll get into how many twists is too many as well but the main thing that twisting the string does is it changes the brace height. Essentially, just think of it this way. As you add twists to the string, it essentially shortens the string itself because instead of the fibers just being as, as elongated as they could be with no twists, as you twist them up, those fibers then have to go around in a circle and it, it literally shortens the string. And when the string gets shorter, these limbs will be pre-bent a little bit more, essentially, I can grab the string because this is a very, very light draw weight bow. And if I were to twist the string, you can see how the limbs start to pull and push in. That then raises the brace height. Again, brace height is the distance from the string to the grip or the string to the burger button hole here, the plunger hole. There is a specific rule of thumb that you would want to run as far as a brace height is concerned. You can find that in the vast majority of the uh, manuals out there that came with the bow that you purchased. If not, you can find them secondhand on the internet and there's tons of recommendations as to brace height ranges depending on the limb length that you're using. It is mostly determined by the limbs itself, not necessarily from tip to tip length of the bow. Although if you're shooting a one piece bow, it's definitely more particular for the length of the bow. I'm not gonna speak to that because I'm not a super expert in one piece bows. So because the string has too few of twists, but the brace height is pretty dang close to what would be ideal and even potentially a little bit too high actually when I look at the limbs 
to see what it's telling me in addition to what I know about the brace height that's recommended for this bow. I can't add twists because it will grow the brace height to a manner that is too high for the system. So what I would need to do is actually have a string built that is slightly longer than this one so then I could add more twists to then keep the brace height the same. I hope that makes sense. It's a pretty straightforward process of adding twists, shorten the string. If your string is already at the right length but with no twists, you need to then have a longer string so you can add the twist to bring the length back correctly, if that makes sense. So this is your dead giveaway. Number one, it's not round. Number two, you can see that there's no twists. And number three, yes, this bow weight is very, very light, but you should never be able to do this on any properly built string that is the correct length. It is just not possible in, well, it's not possible in higher draw weight bows. I can do this, it'd just be a lot more difficult than me just grabbing the strands. But when they're twisted together, they lock together to be perfectly round. So to illustrate the twists, I have this bow here that I shot in the 2012 Olympics. And you can see that it is three different colors, red, white, and blue. And you can see it has twists in the string. And what it has done is it has made the string perfectly round. And I'll show you by rotating the string. You can see it stays nice and round. It doesn't change like the other one did going from flat to thin and things like that, right? So you can clearly see that the string is now round because it has twists in it. But how do I know if the twists are too many? Too many twists are pretty easy to see and you could easily see it in two different ways. The first way is to check the actual end serving here and you can see how you know it forms a V at the end and it still is laying flat on the actual bow itself, the limb itself. It's just touching both sides with no issues and it's just sitting nice and flat. If it had too many twists, even though you have the correct brace height, you'd start to see something like this. This is not a overly over twisted string. You'll see that the groove down here, the flat spot, yes, the serving is separated there. That's a totally different issue. But you'll see that it's not laying flat. Those two pieces are wanting to start to twist on the limb itself and not lay flat against the string or the limb. They're wanting to start to twist up. To show you that, I will take this string uh, on this bow. I've unstrung it already, and I'm going to add. I'm going to I'm going to add a lot of twists. One, two. Now this brings me to another issue, and I'll show you this more in detail. That is another indicator that you have too many twists in your string when the string wants to essentially kind of ball up and turn into almost a knot as you unstring it and go to restring it. If the string doesn't want to lay basically flat, definitely in this area I have far too many twists, but because the rest of those twists that I just added are not normalized throughout the entire length of the string, that means you know it's not even throughout the entire length of the string. Uh, it's not entirely true that this string may have too many twists yet, but that's another giveaway that you can see is if the ball, if the string itself is wanting to ball up and no longer, uh, you know, lay flat when you take it off of the bow itself. So it's just starting to twist. I'm going to add another 10 or so twists to really just over exaggerate this so you can see what I'm talking about. Now that the brace height is way out of range, the distance from there to there, it's just way, way, way too high. You can start to see this. See how the string, those, that V is no longer laying flat. One side is starting to twist up on top of the other one. And now you can definitely see that there is far too many twists in the string and that end loop is starting to cross over. Now there is uh, some times where this will happen even with the correct amount of twists in the string and that would be when the loop is made far too long. This loop is a little bit on the long side, a little bit too long for ideal, but this is just what my string builder made for me back in the day. And now compare before the amount of twists that the string looked like stock to now this. You can really see how there are far more twists in the actual string itself clearly indicating that there's just too many twists. It's just too tight and you'll see in certain areas where the string just doesn't want to be even round anymore. Through this area a few strands are kind of just poking out of the actual bundle 
and it's no longer perfectly round in itself. I could burnish this to potentially get them to lay flat again, but uh, clearly there's too many twists here and the brace height's too high. So because of that, I'm just going to reduce the actual twists in the string. Too many twists in the string with that crossing over of the end loop can cause inconsistencies in the delivery of the arrow. Because as we let go of the string, especially shooting fingers on a bow, you know, finger style shooters, the string makes an S curve as it comes out of our fingers and creates the archer's paradox. It makes those arrows bend that you see in slow motion. And so when it's doing that, the string is taking a non-straight path down and those end loops, one side may hit more than the other or sooner than the other, and it will cause inconsistencies. The excess amount of twists causes the string to bundle up, like I've shown before when there was too many twists where it kind of bundled up. It wants to do that when the string is unloaded and the limbs are acting in a manner when it's you know after the fact of delivering the arrow. It'll cause the string to be erratic and just overall not consistent, again, causing arm impact issues, arm hitting issues, and just overall less accuracy, less consistency downrange. But one of the myths that I want to uh, you know, eliminate is that if you add twists unevenly to one side of the string or remove twists unevenly from one side of the string compared to the other, that you'll change your knocking point height. That's not true. It doesn't work. It doesn't happen. That is not a thing. I can do anything I want with either end of twisting the string and it will not affect the center part of the string. It does not move the knocking point up or down. If your knocking point is off center, which all of ours are, it will move it in a minuscule amount that is negligible and will not affect really any sort of tuning. But twisting the string, like adding 100 twists on the bottom string and removing 100 twists from the top of the string will still result you in the same string length and it will not move that knocking point up like a thread. A lot of people used to believe that or a lot of people think that for whatever reason and I've done that test to prove to one of my coaches actually that you can't add 100 twists here and remove 100 twists here and make the knocking point move up. It just doesn't happen. It's not how it works. And as you saw, when I added a million twists to this bottom part, it bunched up, but then as I strung it, it evenly distributed throughout the entire string. So you could see that. And now you can also see how as I've removed twists, a lot of twists, the string is chaotic. It's no longer consistently twisted, especially through this lower portion. I have a lot less twists and still more twists at the top here because it hasn't normalized after I've strung the bow. Because when it's under tension, it'll find its own centering. Just like this, pluck the string, make sure the limbs are set. Take a look at this, and now the string is consistently twisted the same amount through the entire length of the string, and there's no inconsistencies there. Back to relative roundness, and the brace height's maybe a little bit off. I'll measure it and set it back to where it is. But this bow's just sitting on the shelf back here for display purposes, so it doesn't have to be perfect anyway. I'm not gonna be shooting that one, at least for the foreseeable future. So, you'll notice that there is a range of things. You want to have the correct brace height, dependent upon the bow length you're shooting. I have a video created on how to find the perfect brace height for you. I'll have links in the description below and a card at the top up there for you to check out on how to set your brace height correctly for you and your exact setup, best for your feeling and your own preferences, so you can learn a bit more about that. But, like I said, Brace height is number one. Number two is how many twists you have. Obviously too few here. I displayed to you too many on that one. And you can see that there's a range there. If you're looking for a resource on how to tune and set up your Olympic style recurve, I'm going to recommend this book that I wrote. It's called Tuning for Performance. It basically takes you through step-by-step -step in order of operations of importance on how to tune and set up your Olympic style recurve from taking it out of the box to going and competing with it at like the Olympic Games or World Championships. At least I show you my method and how you do that. And this is a great resource if you're looking for a nice little manual that's easy to hang on to and easy to read because I have no fluff, no like really anything of unimportance other than how to tune and set up your bow. And there will be links in the description below on where you can check out this book. I'll also put a card at the top up there to my website, jakekaminski.com. It is available there in addition to Amazon links in the description below. So with all that being said, 
There is a ratio and a range that you need to have the amount of twists in your string. Not too many, not too few. You gotta make sure you have the right brace height. And ultimately when you have it in the correct range and you have it all set up correctly for you, your bow will be happier and you'll also be happier in the long run.